Good morning, everyone. Uh, when Mary was visited by the angel and told that she was going to bear God's son, Jesus, she responded with this glorious song of praise to God. So let's sing Canticle of the Turning. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did. Testing one, two, just in case. Good morning and welcome to everyone to uh, New Promise Lutheran Church. We're so happy to have you here. If you happen to be a, a guest or a second or third time visitor, uh, please take note of the yellow guest card in a seat pocket in front of you. Fill that out with the information and take it to the welcome window after the service for a small gift in return. Uh, after, uh, during the service, you, we, have uh, we will have communion. We want you to know that everyone is invited to communion. And uh, if you want to partake of that uh, sacrament, please come forward through the center aisle. Pick up an empty glass if you like the wine. If you prefer grape juice, take uh, the pre-filled cup from the acolyte and return by the side aisle. At the conclusion of service, we will have one of our uh, Stephen ministers, Sal Mendez, uh, at the choir area. He will be available to provide prayer uh, for you, with you, if you so desire that. Uh, right now, I have a message from Jack, who's disappeared. There he is. Jack's coming. He'll have a message about Blaze Pizza tomorrow night. church youth group um, we're going to Costa Rica and we've partnered with Blaze Pizza so 25% um, of um, all of tomorrow's funds between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. will go um, towards our funds for the Costa Rica trip And so you can order in the restaurant or on the Blaze Pizza app. And um, if you're going online, just enter in the code um, 135A into the promo code field at the checkout. And I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So there should be a whole lot of pizza eaten New Promise people tomorrow night. Uh, going forward with our calendar, on October 4th we have coming up the Blessing of the Animals. That'll be at 6 o'clock here at church. On October 8th, 
Uh, there is, uh, this is Saturday, I believe, October 8th. Uh, there is a St. George Market uh, downtown Town Square, I believe. Is that where it is? I'm hoping so. Anyway, Pastor Katie is organizing a group of people to man a, station, a prayer station at that market. And what the purpose of that is, if you volunteer to uh, take a time slot to be at that station, uh, uh, the hope is that people will come to you uh, wanting some prayer, asking for prayer, uh, and she's looking for people who would like to be a part of that, uh, that little mission. So there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, and uh, we encourage, if you have an interest in that, to do that. On October 9th, then, that following Sunday, is a Promise Discovery Group. Uh, that's for anybody who might be interested in learning more about New Promise or the Lutheran Church itself. So that will be at 1 o'clock on the 9th. And coming up on October 29th, this is a first-time announcement for our fall festival, and that will be on Saturday, October 29th. Uh, the fellowship team will be hosting that, and they are going to buy uh, bratwurst and invite you to bring sides and uh, sign up at the information desk for that. This is a BYOB uh, function. Uh, just reminding anybody who is participating in that uh, part of the activity to bring your uh, beverage and keep it at your table. Uh, let's see, we have one other. We have a new thing coming up. This is a new motorcycle group. And uh, there is information on the, at the information desk. I don't have details. I can't even remember the name of the guy. Bo Bernard, right there. Um, he is the gentleman, apparently, who has a death wish on motorcycles and will be. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, talk to Bo and sign up at the information desk for that. Uh, pastors Jill and Katie are away this weekend on retreat, so that's why they are not here and you've got me. So thank you. Pastor Joe went to get new batteries. I would uh, invite you all to stand, though, as we uh, face the baptismal font, as we remember our baptism and the gift of grace that God has given us in that sacrament. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we confess our sins before God and one another. Invite us to pause and remember those things for which we need forgiveness. God of promise, you have given us all we are and all we have, and we still have not trusted you fully. We have tried to be God in our own lives, hurting ourselves and those around us in our attempts to control. Wash us clean in the waters of your salvation and bring us back into right relationship with you. God welcomes you home with open arms and forgives all your sin. For the sake of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, live in the promise of God's love. Amen.
Blessed are you. When we are persecuted, Rejoice and be glad. Great shall be our reward. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Faithful God, you prospered the work of Joseph's hands in good times and bad. Give us Joseph's unfailing love for you, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we might overcome whatever life throws at us. Amen. Help us, Lord.
Please be seated. A reading from Matthew. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. A reading from Genesis. Now Joseph was taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites and had him brought him and who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He was in the house of the Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. He made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and with him there, he had no concern for anything but the food that he ate. Now Joseph was handsome and good-looking. And after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, with me here, my master has no concern about anything in the house and he has put everything that he has in my hand. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her. One day, however, when he went into the house to do his work, and while no one else was in the house, she caught hold of his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, she called out to the members of her household and said to them, See, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out in a loud voice. And when he heard me raise my voice and cry out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Then she kept his garment by her until his master came home. And she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you have brought among us came in to insult me. But as soon as I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. When his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, saying, This is the way your servant treated me, he became enraged. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. He remained there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. He gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer paid no heed to anything that was in Joseph's care, because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. The word of the Lord. I would invite any children who would like to come forward for a children's sermon to come up. I know I'm not the normal one who does this, but I promise to be good. Nice. You didn't hesitate at all. I was nervous that they would stay. And 
Well, have a seat. <clears throat> How has school been? Good. I like the school. And your week has been good? Yeah. Would anybody want to share a high and low from this week? What's something good that happened this week? And what was your low point this week? Anything? This was a pretty bland week, it sounds like. No highs, no lows. Well, let me just ask this. Have you ever had lows, bad experiences, things that just don't go right? Had one of those days when you, you just can't do anything right? Kind of tough days, right? So when you have a day like that, when something like that happens, do you kind of wonder, what in the world is God doing up there, right? Can he see things aren't quite going right for me? Do you ever think that? I sometimes think that. Lord, why today do I have to lock my keys in my car, right? So sometimes we sort of interpret those events and things in our day as a reflection of God and how much God cares about us. I mean, I sometimes do that. And I think that's a wrong way to look at it. We know God loves us not because of what goes on in our days. Sometimes we have ups, sometimes we have downs. That's just life. But we know God loves us how? We know God loves us because Jesus, right? right? Jesus died for us. And we're told to be confident that God loves us because Christ died for us. And even when things don't go our way, we can still be a blessing to others, right? We can still help others have good days. Um, and I think that's really what it is to be blessed, right? Okay. Well, I hope this week you have lots of highs, and if you have lows, I hope that you will remember God is with you. All right? Yeah, thank you. He said, me too. Oh, that's very nice. Let's pray. Oh, do we want to, let's hold uh, pinkies maybe? Or you don't have to. If, if it's a scary pinky, we don't have to. Yeah. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you for your love for us, which is um, true no matter how good our day is or how bad our day is. You love us just the same and always. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming up. It's good to see you. Okay, let's pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I want to begin today with kind of a, a bridge from where we were last week to where we are this week. So last week, last week, Katie talked to us about the story of Abraham and God's first encounter with Abraham when God called Abraham to leave his father's home and family and, and land and follow God on the basis of three promises. The first promise was the promise of a child and descendants, right? Abraham and Sarah were barren. They had no children. And so that was probably a pretty important one. The second promise was the promise of land, a place to belong. Uh, rather than being sojourners in the land of somebody else, they would have their own land to dwell in. And then the final promise was the promise of blessing, that God would bless Abraham and his descendants. Now, today's story we jump ahead quite a ways. Uh, today's story is really about Abraham and Sarah's great-grandson, Joseph, right? So obviously God has already kept the first promise, at least uh, so far so good, right? Abraham and Sarah had Isaac, their son, and then Isaac uh, and Rebekah had Esau and Jacob, 
And today's story follows one of Jacob's sons, Joseph. The, Joseph is actually the youngest son at this point in the story. And the story of Joseph is one of the longest stories in the Bible. Um, it starts at verse, or, or chapter uh, 37 in the book of Genesis, and it continues to the very end of Genesis, the last verse of chapter 50, when Joseph dies. And it's a wonderful story. And actually, I am going to go see this story in a play at Tuacon with uh, Dylan Harris over there. We're going to go check it out. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Anybody ever seen that? A few. Okay, so some people know this story. That's good. That's good, because there's a lot to this story. Um, but maybe some of you are wondering, as I did when I heard our gospel lesson today, why our, our lectionary chose this particular story. I mean, this is not the one that first comes to mind when you think of Joseph, right? Joseph is probably best known for his dreams. Uh, Joseph had these dreams when he was a kid uh, that he would be lord over his brothers. That kind of got him into trouble later on, but I'll tell you about that later. Uh, but then later on in the story, Joseph interprets dreams for uh, some fellow prisoners and then later for Pharaoh. Helps him get to an elevated position in Egypt. Those, I think, would have been great stories, but the lectionary didn't choose those stories. Another story I thought would have been good for the lectionary to choose was the end, right? It's kind of a happily ever after story. Jacob, Jacob or, or excuse me, Joseph finally reveals who he is to his brothers who don't know, um, and they have this come together moment, right? They, they reconcile as siblings, and it's kind of a happily ever after story. That would have been a great story for the lectionary. Didn't choose that one either. So we get this strange story. But I do think this story is interesting and certainly has something to teach us. I love, for example, the way this story illustrates the third promise to Abraham. So remember the third promise to Abraham was that Abraham would be blessed, Abraham and his descendants. And interesting to Consider how we see those promises fulfilled here in this story, one of Abraham's descendants. But there are really two ways to look at it in this story. I mean, if we're just looking at Joseph here, I'm not really sure we could say with great confidence that Joseph is blessed, right? I mean, I've already told you that Joseph, uh, as a kid, had these visions and in his dreams, he was made master over his brothers, and he told them about this, and they didn't like it, and they threw him in a pit. That's not much of a blessing, right? Now, I feel, as a fellow Joseph, I feel I should defend Joseph in this story, and I would just remind you he was a teenager, right? Teenagers, who knows what they're thinking, right? So... Uh, that's in Joseph's defense. But fortunately, some Ishmaelites come along and they pull Joseph out of the pit. That's kind of a blessing. But it turns out it was more a blessing for the Ishmaelites than Joseph because then they take him to Egypt and they sell him as a slave in Egypt. That doesn't feel like much of a blessing. But Joseph is industrious and he works hard and he earns the trust of his master Potiphar and becomes extremely profitable for his master. And so, things are looking pretty good. Except for this, the fact that misfortune strikes again. Apparently, Joseph uh, is uh, good-looking. And um, his master's wife is attracted to him. So, apparently, not all Josephs have everything in common. But... Um, <laughs> His wife pesters Joseph and won't stop bothering him. And Joseph, of course, wants nothing to do with it. He is completely uh, appropriate and refuses to comply with her desires. But she, she accuses him falsely. 
and uh, tells her husband, and her husband is enraged, of course, and throws Joseph in prison, and so there goes the blessing, right? Now Joseph is in prison. Um, all of that doesn't feel like Joseph is truly benefiting from the promise that God had made to his great-great-grandfather Abraham. But here's the funny thing. This story, in the way that it's told, assures us that Joseph is blessed. In the story, we are repeatedly told that the Lord was with Joseph and that whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. And it's true. Everything Joseph does seems to result in success and blessing, but not always for him. Right? Joseph is a blessing to the Ishmaelites who make a tidy profit after selling him as a slave in Egypt, right? And he's definitely a blessing to Potiphar. In fact, the only time the word blessing or blessings is used in this story, it's regarding Potiphar, right? From the time that he made him overseer in his house, over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for the Lord, I'm going to try and turn that on because this microphone is acting wacky. Uh, the blessing of the Lord was with all that he had in house and field, so he left all that he had in Joseph's charge and with him there. He had no concern for anything but the food that he ate. That's the kind of blessing Joseph ought to be getting, right? I mean, the promise was to his ancestor. And of course, um, If you know anything about the story of Joseph, you know that Joseph is uh, an instrument of blessing all the way to the very end when he finally becomes uh, elevated in the house of Pharaoh, an overseer over all of Pharaoh's goods. Um, He becomes a blessing to Pharaoh and to Egypt and even to the countries surrounding Egypt who in time of famine come to Egypt for help includes even Joseph's own family. If the story of Joseph, uh, if in the story of Joseph, uh, Joseph were only a blessing to himself, this really wouldn't be much of a story, would it? It wouldn't be compelling at all. In fact, um, this story would really be a story of greed and cruelty and starvation and tragedy if Joseph had only been concerned about blessing himself. But the story of Joseph is a powerful story because Joseph doesn't really see the blessings of God as a personal benefit or as a reward of faithfulness or as a divine right of his heritage as a child of Abraham. He simply trusts God and follows God and assumes that God will be faithful. And in that respect, Joseph is a lot like Jesus, right? Who is a blessing to many, right? Healing many, forgiving others, offering words of encouragement, hope and promise to those needing it even as Christ himself suffered rejection, false accusation, persecution, and finally death. And yet in the suffering of Christ comes the most important blessing of God that the world has ever known. Today, we are the descendants of Abraham, those who bear the promise of blessing that God had made to Abraham. We also bear the blessing of Christ who died and was raised for us. But I think there is a tendency even today to regard uh, our faith and the blessings of God in very individualistic ways, right? Um, When things don't go our way, when I lock my keys in my car, uh, 
it's easy to say, God, why have you forgotten about me? What are you doing up there? How come things aren't going the way they're supposed to go? Why don't you love me? I think that's why this story is so important. Joseph reminds us that God's promise of blessing is not a promise that we would never struggle or never experience hardship or persecution or trials. The promise of blessing is really good as a promise that God will provide everything we need to be a blessing to others and to carry out God's call on our lives. God promises to provide us everything we need to be a blessing and to carry out God's call on our lives. And when we trust that, when we surrender our small, limited, self-focused idea of blessing and trust God's promise that we are a blessing, then we become a larger part of God's blessing of the world, and we become a tangible reality of the kingdom of God here and now. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let's stand as we sing. I invite you to join me in professing your faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended unto hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident in the promises of our covenant God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Faithful God, through Joseph you blessed so many whose lives were in his path. Make us blessings for others so that they may know of your abundant mercy. God of promise, you hear our prayer. Show us how to be faithful stewards of your creation, being not wasteful, but thoughtful in the ways that we use and reuse the resources you have entrusted to us. God of promise, you hear our prayer. 
Bless all the people through the leadership of all whom you have called to govern. Give those with power, hearts to serve with justice and mercy. God of promise, hear our prayer. Pour your healing upon all who suffer. Sustain them through their challenges and bring all into your healing light. We also pray for those listed in promising news who have asked for prayer. Prayers from the congregation are now invited, either aloud or from your hearts. God of promise, you hear our prayer. Through us, send resources to all people in need so that all who are hungry, homeless, or suffering might suffer no more. God of promise, hear our prayer. We remember with joy and thanksgiving all the saints whose humble efforts kept churches running smoothly for congregations near and far. Inspire us to follow in their footsteps that you might prosper the work of our hands, God of promise. Trusting in your grace and mercy, we lift these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share a sign of peace with someone nearby.
invite the congregation to stand if you are able. Thank you for the sun. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God nourishes us with this meal that we may be a blessing to all the world. Come and share in the blessing of Jesus' body and blood. I invite the congregation to be seated.
invite the congregation to stand as you are able. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Go in peace with God beside you.